take number three because I didn't like what I had on the slide on the diagram twice. We'll see if we get it right this time. So this is really about you know, what are the interesting kinds of things about a graph database that make it smell different from a relational database? And how can we use that in a customer card, customer and per customer transaction, customer purchase example? So in this case, the top of the graph is actually a person, right? We're modeling a person and the things around that person. I, I changed two of the nodes here because I wanted, wanted their lines to stand out a little bit while we talk and I didn't really want to move through a slideshow. So in this case, a person has a phone, has a set of phone numbers, and each of those numbers will exist as an instance in the phone vertex. So graph databases are vertexes and edges. And you you can have as many vertex types as you want, many edge types as you want. And the edges are relationships, are joins, relationships between two vertex types. You can have multiple relationship types between vertex types. And that's pretty cool. So an example here, um, this person actually has a phone number and their contact number is a relationship, right? And this means that if multiple people end up using the same phone number, that node will exist in this table as that vertex. And we might have multiple people joining to the same phone number. But for this case, for this person, they could have a security number, like their SMS number, and they could have a personal contact number if a human needed to be talked to, all right? And then like if that person did a transact credit card transaction, um, that transaction might have a confirmation number. And so that transaction might be tied to that number. Sometime later, that person might delete this node, this edge between these two nodes because that's no longer their phone. But from a transaction point of view, we'd still like to know that at some time this, uh, person placed a transaction and that transaction was confirmed by this line here, right? So these edges to this phone number actually mean different things. Um, and so we've typed them, right? And um, you can have as many security numbers as you want. You can have as many contact numbers as the system supports, but that's what that one is. And then on the card, the card itself might have a notification numbers, right? So I bought something and I was confirmed with a text, come pick it up. It's on its way. The card may also have a fraud notification. Hey, a purchase was made. This a person was made. Purchase was made with this vendor. I'm going to notify you, right? And then the other phone number that we might have. So a person might actually have a bank account. They have a credit card, and their credit card was issued by a bank, and that bank had a registered phone number. So in this case, I we tried to model the relationships between vertexes as they are used not in some normalized fashion where you got to go drill through things to figure out what number. Now, the other interesting thing here, which I think is really cool about edges, and you can kind of think of it as a many, many joint table, even if you're doing one to ones or one to ends or end to M, is the edges actually have properties, right? So <clears throat> then the security number here, I might want to keep track of the last time we sent an SMS. Uh, another one may, might be was I told to stop right? I had this security number they gave me in the, or uh, down here, right? Confirmation. And they might block the confirmation. They might like, I don't want to know anything else about uh, this transaction on my phone. So properties are super, edges are super cool, I think. First, you can create all these different edge types as you want, and they map the way you think about it. You haven't got to go smash it down, turn it into some rectangular thing or do anything like that. You <clears throat> come up with the entities you're interested in and you come up with how they're related. So, and then you model that and you decide if you're going to add properties. So like on this transaction here, we have a ship to address and a built to address, right? Um, and so this address is the same address node could be used for multiple things, being multiple relationships. Uh, this address, they might have a home address. Um, that same address node or a different address node might be the ship to address for this order or the built to for this order. It might be the billing address for the card. Um, and so in this case, we didn't make a relationship directly to the card with a billing number on the person. What we did is we created reference vertices called phones and addresses, and we created relationships from our business entities into those 
reference entities in this case. Um, and so the rest of this kind of looks the same way, right? Um, the card is issued by the bank. The vendor did a transaction. So we had this transaction here where we ordered from the vendor and the vendor actually had a transaction at the bank and we had a mount and we got an authorization code, right? And the same vendor could have thousands of transactions with that bank. Now, obviously we don't wanna do millions of things, millions of links in the graph between a vendor and a bank. So this example, we probably would rework a little differently. Um, but I, I just wanted to point out that the idea is think of all the entities in your system and then think of how they're related to each other and what property those relationships have. And you'll end up with a graph database and then you can decide whether it makes sense or not. And try it. It's pretty interesting. Have a great day.